Hello everyone, welcome to Wrath of Math. I'm your host, Sean E, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at how do you know when an if-then statement is true. So, let's just consider a generic if-then uh, statement, if p, then q, which we'll write as p implies q. So we're going to use um, a, what is called a truth table here, um, just so I can draw out very easily for you um, when this statement, if p then q, when that's true. So we've got p in one column, q in another column, and then p, the statement that we're looking at, p implies q in the last column. When p is false and q is false, p implies q is true. When p is false and q is true, p implies q is true. When p is true and q is false, p implies q is false. And when p is q, excuse me, when p is true and q is true, p implies q is true. So a good way to think about this that one of my professors told me is think of the statement like a promise and you're only breaking your promise if your if part is fulfilled and your q part isn't. So if I say if dragons exist then they breathe fire. Let's consider that statement. So if dragons exist, let's say dragons don't exist. So then dragons don't exist. Um, suppose they don't breathe fire well then the statement is still true because I'm saying that dragons only breathe fire if they exist. So if they don't exist then I'm not uh, necessarily wrong because I'm just saying if they do exist they breathe fire. Now what if they do breathe fire um, but they don't exist? Well I'm still not breaking my promise because I'm saying if they do exist then they breathe fire. So just because they breathe fire doesn't mean I'm wrong. Suppose they do exist and they still breathe fire then I would be I would be correct. Now, if they do exist, but they don't breathe fire, that's the only way that I could possibly be wrong. The if part of the statement has to be fulfilled in order for the statement um, to be false. So if both things are, are true, then of course I'm correct in saying uh, if dragons exist, then they breathe fire. P is true, Q is true, P implies Q is true. So that's how I like to think about it. You've got to break the promise in order for the statement to be false. So of course, uh, if you tell your kid, um, if, you re if you do some reading for an hour, then I'll give you some candy, you're not breaking your promise unless the child reads for an hour. If they read for 50 minutes, um, they're not guaranteed any candy because that's not the statement that you told them. You said if they read for an hour, then you'll give them some candy. So that's my breaking down of how you know if an if-then statement is true. I hope that helped. I uh, hope it wasn't too confusing. Be sure to let me know if you have any further questions or clarification requests or topic ideas in the comments. I'd be happy to cover them. Um, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet.